We'll sing today number 199.
To God the Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, we come to you this morning, and we beg for guidance from you. We beg for an understanding of your work here upon the earth, and we beg that you give us the words to say that would be pleasing in your sight, that would be encouraging to someone that is here today, that would be in effect for someone to see your will and to be able to see and to know that you are our Master and you are our Lord and for us all to be subject to you. Thank you for what you have done for us. Thank you for coming here to the earth and establishing the law of grace. Increase our faith in you. Forgive us our sins and show us what you would have for us to do with the things that you have entrusted into our hands. And most of all, how we should use that spirit that you have entrusted for us to be able to use here upon the earth. What a wonderful and glorious thing that is for us all. But it's something that we, could t we should take very seriously and to know what your will is for us. We ask these things all in Jesus' name. Amen. The song that we sung there, wonder how we all would stack up to that. Did you think to pray? When you awoke this morning, was that upon your mind? What must I do today, Lord? And what would you have for me to do? And how can I encourage someone else in your work? In whatever way that it might be. And when you meet with temptations, great temptations, or small temptations, whatever it might be, did you think to pray? Did you think to ask the Lord to give you the strength and the Spirit to lead you through it? When your heart was filled with anger, did you think to pray before the words came out of your mouth? By His dying love and merit, did you claim the Holy Spirit as your guide and stay? By praying to Him, by taking it to Him, it's what He is asking for us all to do and what He has been giving us the instructions to do is to take our condition, yours and mine, each one of us, we have to do that on an individual basis if we truly want to get the help. I can pray for you and you can pray for me. But if I truly want the help from the Lord, I've got to go for myself. And I've got to ask. As we read through the Testament, this is the things that he has encouraged his people to do. And he has showed them the power that, can, that they can have, spiritual power. I'm not talking about natural power over man or over women or over whatever it might be. But I'm talking about the power over this fleshly body, over the sins of the lust of the flesh, Power over Satan is what I'm talking about, that he can give to all that ask. That's what we need to be searching for, seeking for, and that we might furnish this tabernacle of clay to him as good ground. I want you to think about, we talk about these things constantly, but do we truly understand it? Do each and every one of us today understand 
what our duty is here upon the earth and what God would have to be done in you and in me through His Son, Jesus Christ, that we can help to promote His kingdom here upon the earth. And where does that start? It starts right here with me, and it starts right there with you. And we've got to have a desire for that, a desire for that more than anything else here upon the earth, that I'm willing to do whatever you see fit for me to do, Lord. And I'm willing to lay it all aside for you, Lord. Now, is that in our mind? That's what Jesus Christ did. He came here to the earth and He set the example for us and He laid it all aside. He left the shining courts of glory there where He was with the Father and with the other righteous. His Father sent Him down here, told Him He had a work He wanted Him to do and He was subject to His Father. He was obedient to His Father. And He is asking for us to use the same Spirit that, then, that He overcame Satan with. And He says, now I'm going back to my Father. I have come here to the earth. I've lived here on the earth. I have overcome Satan in this flesh so that now you, me and you, all of Adam's family can be able to overcome Satan while we're here. And we can have that spirit within us. He says, I will go away. I'm going back to my Father. But I will send to you that comforter. And I want us to all to understand that. That that comforter is available to all that ask. But there comes with that a spirit there. That is the spirit of the Holy Ghost, that comforter that comes with it, that comes when we ask. And then it will lead us away. It will lead us out of sin. It won't carry us into sin. He will allow us to be tempted by Satan. But what did God do? God allowed His Son, Jesus Christ, that was full of the Holy Ghost. He allowed Him to be tempted. And He overcame it all just by waiting upon the Lord, waiting upon what God would have for him to do. He was over to overcome every situation that Satan brought before him. Wherever it was, did not matter. He was there. The Spirit of God was within him. And what did he do? He has promised. He says, I'm going away and I'll send to you that comforter. I'll send to you the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. That is what was within Jesus Christ here upon the earth. Do you have faith that He can do that? Do you believe that He can send you that Spirit? Do you believe that you have accepted that Spirit? Do you know that you have that Spirit within you? If you don't, the opportunity is there. It is for us today. Now when we receive of that, then we make a commitment to Him. That's how we've been able to get it. We've made that commitment to Jesus Christ that we will serve Him, that we will lay down our will and our way. We will trust Him. Do you trust Him to make the decisions in your life? And I guess we all, each and every one of us, need to be making that commitment, we need to be asking ourselves that. Do we trust Jesus Christ to make the decisions in our life? It doesn't matter how big or how small it is. Do we trust Him to make that decision for us? If we don't, then it's us making that, and we're putting Jesus aside. We're pushing Him aside instead of allowing Him to be fully within our soul, with it fully within our body, and reconciled to His will, then whatever it might be. And I know that we can receive these things, friends, but it's a matter, it is a serious matter with us all. When we receive that, then what do we do with it? He says, Ask, and ye shall receive. 
He says, if you do not receive when you ask, then there is something wrong with the way you are asking. He says that God will give liberally to all of those that ask to all of those that, has, that truly has a desire for His Spirit, He will give to them liberally. He even gave us parables of that. He says, look around you. Look at you being evil. He says, you know how to give good gifts unto your children. If they ask certain things, you will not give them something that is bad for them. And He says, how much more will your heavenly Father do for you, for those that ask Him? Do we believe the Scripture? That's what Paul asked. I believe it was Festus. He says, do you believe? He says, I know that you believe. And he said, I wish that not only you were persuaded to be a Christian, but all of those, he says, not almost, but you would be persuaded to be. And be as I am, except with these bonds that I have. And I know that that's the desire of Jesus Christ in all of mankind today. He says, I came here to save all of the world. I didn't just come to save a few. I came to give the opportunity to all of mankind to be saved. And are we going to use it? Or are we let Satan steal a march upon us? Will we let him? Just reading this week, I don't know how many times reading through in different places of the Bible that he talks about false prophets. And do not be deceived. Christ was even talking about them while He was here upon the earth. That there would be many of them that would come here upon the earth and deceive people. And He talked about that those, He says, there are many, He says, don't get on that broad road that leads to destruction, being led by a false prophet. He says, but there are many that will be led in that direction. Why? Because they are not willing to put it all into the hands of Jesus Christ. He says that there would be many that would go to that wide gate and that broad road that leads to destruction, he said. But he said there would be few that would actually travel that straight and that narrow path by putting it all into the hands of Jesus Christ, whatever it might be, put it into His hands and let Him direct us to do His will, whatever it might be. But to those that travel on that road shall find eternal life. And what does He tell us and what do we constantly bring up that he says the wages of sin is eternal death. But the gift of God, and what is the gift of God? The Spirit of the Holy Ghost. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And that's offered to us today. And friends, don't just come out here each Sunday and hear the Word and then let Satan immediately take it out of our mind just as that sower sowed the seed. And it fell by the wayside and the birds of the air came and picked it up and took it away and it brought no fruit at all. The ground was not prepared there so that they could receive the seed. Have you come out today... Is your ground, that spiritual ground, is it prepared to receive the message that the Lord has to offer to all today? Is it prepared for you to bring forth good, to bring forth many fold? Some, he said, a hundred, some sixty, some thirty. 
because they had prepared that ground. And that's you and I have to prepare that ground. To be able to receive that, we've got to get ourselves into the condition to where we can receive the Word. Now are we receiving it today? It's up to you and it's up to me to be able to know Him and it's up to us to whether or not we are receiving it. His Word will be preached and is being preached to us now. Simple, pure, and free. Just as He told His disciples and what He told them to do. As He sent them forth, what did He do? How did He prepare His servants to go forth and to teach His people, to teach His Word? How did He prepare them? He gave them instructions. And what did He tell them? He says, Go ye into these cities and preach the Word. Do not take a script. Don't write down the things that you need to say. He says, God will give you, I will give you the things that's necessary to say at the right and the proper time. He says, you don't need a script. He said, don't take any money. Don't take two coats, I believe it was. He says, I will prepare for you. I will give to you whatever is necessary so that my word can be spread here upon the earth. The reason that he did those things for them in that time, those days, he wanted them to have full faith in what he was telling them to do and to have full trust in Him, what He was telling them to do, and knowing that if Jesus Christ is the one that gives us the instructions, then I know that they are good instructions, and that I know that if I follow them, I will become out victorious. And if I follow His instructions, I will grow spiritually. And when we go on and we think about just the parable or the things, it was not a parable, it was the instructions that he gave these men to do. And they went out and they were obedient to it. And what did they come back to him in a few days? They came back, I believe they were ecstatic. They were excited about what had taken place in their life there. They came back telling him all about what took place there in their life by them being obedient to the calling of Jesus Christ, by following His directions, not man's, but following the directions that God the Father had given Jesus to give to His people. And they followed them. And they grew spiritually and they came back and they were telling Him and they were excited about even the devils, He said, are subject to us. And I know in you that the devils can be subject to you if you follow the things and do the commandments that Jesus Christ has for us to do here in our day. And our work may be totally different almost from what these people were. He might have something different for you to do and for me to do than what He sent for them to do. And we can read through the Bible and see all manner of different people and the different works that they had. But it was all of one spirit. One spirit. And there were some that started out and some then that went by the wayside. They lost out. Because why? Because they did not keep their eyes singled upon Jesus Christ and on God the Father. And they decided that they could do things of their own way, their own will, instead of following His will and His work. And what happened? They lost out. Let's don't let these things get come into our life and right into our congregation and lose out with Him. But let's be careful, as He says constantly to us, careful what we do in everything, careful to follow His work, His will, not our will. But things can carry us off of how He has said in places there of how that Satan can come in 
in sheep's clothing. But he says he is as a roaring lion, a roaring wolf, whatever it might be. He is there to destroy the sheep. But he can come in looking like that he is an angel of light even. These are things that our Lord, He put in this Bible for us. These are not just words that I am saying of myself. These are words that come right out of this Bible. The Lord just warning us about certain things to be careful with. They can carry you away. He says, don't let the little things of this world the small things and the large things, but it'll start out small and it'll just a little bit here and a little there and after a while, it will carry you right away, right away from the truth. I know we've talked about these things as things and I've heard it ever since I was a child of how that a wedge, you can take that wedge and you can take a big block of wood, strong and solid that block of wood is, and it looks like that it, and it would, it would stand there and never be broken up at all. But if you take that chisel, that wedge, and lay it upon top and you start to pound it with a hammer, that wedge will begin to go into that piece of wood. And if you continue to hammer it, just a steady hammering on that wedge, and that great massive block, that strong block of wood will eventually just split open and it will be split apart. And I've heard the example there that Satan will do the same with us if we aren't careful. And I remember as a child being with someone and them showing me that. And this man was splitting the wood and he showed it how that it would just a little bit just a steady hammering on that would split it off and he made the comment he said that's what Satan will do to us if we aren't careful and he will split us off and take us away from his truth let's don't let these things happen to us it can start out so subtly and so easy. And that steady pounding that Satan will do and carry us right away. And there can be many, many things in this life that will come in between us and Jesus Christ and split us away. The man that told me those things, eventually left the church. His work is between him and God. But I'd be careful that I went away from where I felt like that the Lord was teaching his people that I might be able to get help spiritually from somewhere else Put your faith and trust and hope where you see the Lord working. He says that is what we all need to do. And don't be led away by Satan, but be strong in his work here upon the earth. I want to read some here this morning. I'll turn here to Matthew. The Lord had a message that he preached, the Sermon on the Mount. Let's read the sixth chapter of the Sermon on the Mount there. <coughs> All of these words seem like here recently everywhere that I read. There is just so much there that the Lord has to offer to His people. 
But where it all comes to is that we have to follow Him. It's not something that we can go out here and just say, yes, I believe upon Him, and then go away and do whatever we see fit to do. We've got to follow Him. Starting at that first verse, he says, Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them, otherwise you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. And what he is telling us all is to worship Him in our own body, in our own way, not go out here and to try to do things so that men may see it and that man might talk about you and me and what we can do and what we are doing of our own self. That is not at all what he's saying. He says, go out here and do the things to God. Do them because he is asking for us to do it, not to be seen of men. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Their reward is just getting the satisfaction of the praises of men here upon the earth. And we can see things today somewhat similar to that, of how that religious people in some cases they may dress in certain ways and wear long robes and put on all kind of hats and different things to try to show how pious that they might be. But to me, the Lord says to just do thine alms to Him. He says, don't go out and to try to illustrate how pious that you are. He says that if you do those things and those people that do it, do that type work, He says they have their reward here upon the earth. And what reward is that? A reward here upon the earth, everything that is here upon the earth is temporal. It will soon be gone. I want to be able to get that reward that is everlasting. I want to be able to receive that reward of eternal life by accepting Jesus Christ. But when thou doest thine alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And this is the thing that we'd better all take heed to and listen carefully to, to do your work between you and the Father, and then let him show you what you need to do. But just do it between you and him not going out and telling people all about what you're doing and what a great work that you're doing for the Lord and this kind of thing. That's not what he's asking for. That's not what he's talking about here. He says, do them to thy Father in secret, just between you and him. And thy Father shall reward you openly. Others then will be able to see that spirit within you. They'll be able to see the power that God has within you. And they'll be able then to see that and give God the glory, not you and not me. We don't need it. We don't want it. But to just give it to God for what He is doing in our life, if that's the case. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And I believe that that's the way that our prayers, that most of our prayers should be done. I know there are certain times that we pray in public when we have a meal. Whatever it might be, there's times and there are times like today and every Sunday that we pray at some point of the service. 
But I believe that most of our prayers, especially of prayers of our own self, that we are going to the Lord for our own individual self, those things should be done in secret. I believe that there was people that he was talking about in that day that they would go out into the synagogues and whatever and they would stand and pray and tell all about the things that they did and all about how good they were to the Lord. And he tells about that in, another, in one place there of how they, the man did, the publican and the Pharisee, I believe it was, how one of them went and he prayed and he told the Lord all about how good he was. And the other one, the publican, I believe, just looked around, didn't even lift up his eyes unto heaven, and he said, Lord, forgive me, a sinner. Have mercy upon me, a sinner. And that is the way you and I need to be today, asking for mercy from God the Father through His Son. But when you pray... Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. The Lord knows what we need. He knows all about us. If we'll go to Him, we don't need to just go, I don't feel like, and spend hours and hours and hours in prayer. Each day. Now I know that we need to spend a certain amount of time in prayer. But when I read what the Lord says here, and these are words that the Lord said, He says, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. He says, don't be like that. Just come to me and spill out your heart Tell me the things that you need and why you need it, and then let's work on it. Be not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask Him. What we were just talking about. He knows our needs, but He wants us to ask. He knows that each and every one of us is lost, eternally lost, without Him. But He does not give it to us. He does not give everybody, just walk up and give them that, that Spirit of the Holy Ghost. You have to ask for it. You've got to go to Him in prayer asking for that. And you don't have to be a great scholar, the most ignorant person on the earth can go to Him and ask Him. Just follow His commandments. And he says, ask. And what do you need to ask for? Ask for him to be your Savior. Ask for him to be to forgive you your sins. Ask for him to give you the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. That's the things that we need to ask for. Just those simple things. And he says, I will give to you. After this matter, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Honored be your name, he says. Thy kingdom come. Your kingdom here upon the earth. Let it come upon all of us. Thy will be done in earth. Your will, Lord, not our will. This is just a simple, pure prayer. And when I think about it and I pray it occasionally, I think, well, you know, I may need to do this, use just this prayer more. It covers everything when we stop and think about it. But I know that there are certain things that we need to take directly to the Lord. But this covers a lot, this prayer does. And our Lord just told him, he says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Your will. Now think about asking the Lord, he says, Now let your will be done here on earth in me as your will is done in heaven. Now what is being done in heaven? The righteous are there. Satan is not there. 
in those people. And that's what our Lord was saying for us to ask God the Father to let His will be done in us here upon the earth just as His will is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Now that's saying a lot. If we just ask the Lord, Lord, give us this day, this day, each and every day, give us our daily bread, the things that you see that we need. Now he's not just talking about the natural things. He's talking about the spiritual things here first of all. Give us this day our daily bread, what we need to go through this life spiritually. And if we totally trust in Him to do these things, He will also show us what to do in that natural part also. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And that's a big one there for a lot of people. If we don't forgive others, how can the Lord forgive us? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, do you, now, is that what you truly want? Ask yourself that question. Do you truly want to be forgiven of your sins as you are forgiven others? Is there things in your life that you are holding people hostage with that you are not forgiving them if they have come to you and repented of their sins? and you are not willing to forgive them and to lay it aside? If that's the case with you, how can God forgive you? How can Jesus Christ forgive you if you are not willing to forgive others? It's a very simple thing for us. We've got to be willing to just lay it aside and to forgive if we want Jesus and His Father to do the same for us. And I know that that is the only way that we can enter into that kingdom of heaven is we've got to lay it all aside. And we've got to then forgive as Jesus has forgiven us. And lead us not into temptation and He'll never lead us into temptation. He will allow temptations to come upon you, but He will never lead you into temptation. But deliver us from evil. And that is what we should be asking daily. Deliver us from evil. And, how, and He will do that. He has promised to do that for us. He's promised to give us of that comforter, that spirit, that grace of God, the power of God, that will deliver us from all temptations just as it delivered Jesus Christ from temptations if we will allow it. Now we've got to allow that to happen within us. If we don't allow the power to be within us, then we won't do it. Jesus Christ went around. He went into His his town, where he came from. And he preached to the people. And it says there that they did not accept him. They looked around and they said, Is this not Joseph's son? Is this not Mary's son? Who is he that can tell us these things? Who is he? And it says that there was not many mighty works done there. And why? Because the people did not believe upon him. They did not have faith in him. And he could not, that power was not available to them. And he went away. And the same can be with us today. If we don't have full faith in Jesus Christ, that he, what he has promised, he will do in you, and he'll do it in me. If he's promised these things. And he's not a liar. He has promised, and he will do it. He will give us power over all things, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the kingdom of Jesus, of, of the Father here upon the earth, and the power, the power of the Father upon the earth, and the glory of the Father forever. Amen. And that is 
to all of us, we should be saying that to Him, to accept Him. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Again, these are words that Jesus spoke, not me. I'm just reading them, and I'm encouraging you to listen to them. It says, in, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Now that was so important. This thing about forgiving. That was so important that Jesus has gone over this. He, he went over it in the prayer that he talked to him, and then he came back to it, and he has gone over that specifically to his people, that the people that he was preaching to there today. Because that was extremely important to them. And it's extremely important to us today that if we want to have full forgiveness from Jesus Christ, then we've got to be willing to forgive all men their trespasses against us. It does not matter how serious of a trespass or damage that they do to us, how much they have wronged us. We've got to have that forgiveness in our heart. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto the Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And again, this just goes back to what he was talking about a while ago. That whatever you do, working a work in that you feel like is working, something between you and the Lord, do it between you and the Lord. Not so that men can see you and tell about how pious you are and all of the things that you do, what will that gain us but nothing? He says, they have their reward. And that reward, as I said, is temporal. And that reward will, be go, will go away. But if we follow the things that he says to do, he says, your Father will reward you openly. And I believe that where we're really rewarded openly will be at that final judgment day when we stand there with Him and all the people there coming up, all of Adam's family being judged, and Jesus Christ reward you openly right in front of all the millions of people there that, yes, He calls your name out and says, Come, enter ye into my kingdom. Wouldn't that be rewarding you openly in front of all? What more would we want to desire than to, to do the things here upon the earth secretly in His name so that we can be rewarded openly at that final day? Rewarded openly by when He comes here to the earth that we can rise to meet Him into the air and we can all see at that time the righteous rising to meet Him, being rewarded openly. These are the things that we need to have on our mind and we need to be seeking for today. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, but where thieves break through and steal. And he says, we better be careful with these things here. That we lay up too much of the treasures here, that that is what our mind is upon. And that is what we are seeking after, is what can I do to lay up more of the things of this world he says, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. 
For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. Now I want us to think about the things that we just read there. If we lay up with our mind this constantly and we are just trying to figure out how I can get more and more here upon the earth instead of being content with the things that the Lord gives to us. And then, if I just don't put the effort and the time into laying up treasures upon earth. And he says, now those, those treasures, if we'll just lay up that. But, and he tells us, he says, don't do this other. But he says, lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where nothing can come. Nobody can come and take that away from you. Think about that. No man can come and take that away from you at all. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now then he goes on and he talks about where is the light of your body? What are you singling your mind upon? He says, if that eye, if therefore thine eye be single, and what is he talking about? He's talking about it being singled upon Jesus Christ, being singled upon things above. And upon what can I do to put my treasure on things above? He says, if that eye is singled upon that, the whole body shall be full of light. And you'll be able to have the understanding that you need. You will get that from Jesus Christ. He will give it to you. He said that that body will be full of light. But if thine eye be evil... If then, if we are going out here and we are just chasing the things of this world and the lust of the flesh, then that eye is evil, he says. That mind is evil. Thy whole body shall be full of darkness, he says. There is no righteousness there. And if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness... How great is that darkness? It is so great, it will carry you into eternal damnation. That's how great it is. And that is what is going throughout the world today. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't serve God and the things of this world is what he's saying. He says the things of this world are the enmity with the things of God. He says you'll love one and hate the other. Now which one do you want to love? Do you want to love the things of the world? Well, if you do, you hate the things of God. If you love the things of God, you hate the things of the world. So what is the choice is ours? What do you want to choose today, friends? Therefore, I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is it not, is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? And also think about these things. These are words that our Lord was telling us. And if we aren't careful, we can spend way too much time, and we do. The Lord is constantly reminding us, be careful where you go, be careful how you dress, be careful the things that you say. And that's what he's talking about right here. Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? He said, don't. Let that be the number one thing in your life. He says, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not. Neither do they reap, neither gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? He says, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and these other things I will give to you. I'll give you knowledge of what you should do and how you should do, and what it can give to you. Which of you, by thinking thought, can add one cubic into his stature? 
And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies how of the field, how they grow. They spin not. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And we can put a lot of time and effort into how that we dress this body and how we'll paint it up or whatever it might be or glorify it with all manner of things so that we can make this body look more appealing to someone. But what did the Lord say, say about those things? Which of you can take thought, by, uh, can add one cubit in stature? And why do you take thought for raiment? Consider the lilies. That lily is a beautiful lily. It's a beautiful flower there. And he says, Solomon, in all his glory, that he had everything that his hearts could desire. Go back and read about all the things that he had and all the finery of the gold and silver and the clothes and everything, the jewels that he had. But he says that was nothing compared to the way that God had adorned that lily and how He will show us how we can adorn ourselves. And I don't think at all that He's saying for us to come out shabby looking and, and dirty and not dressed right. But He will show us what we should be dressed and how we should dress in everywhere that we go. And it won't be that our dress is no different from the dress of the world. Because you can look around and you can see a lot of the way that the people of the world dress. And they do not dress in a manner, I believe, that is pleasing to the Lord. They expose their bodies in ways that I think that would not be becoming to a righteous person. And again, these are words of the Lord. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? We've asked that our faith be increased. And that's what every one of us need to be begging daily, that our faith be increased so that we understand the things that the Lord is bringing to our attention. And that He can do all for us. He will do. He has promised that you seek the kingdom of God first and I'll give to you all the other things that you need. Have faith that He can do this for us. And He will. He will show us. He will direct us. Therefore, take no thought saying, What shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And that's the key. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. And how do you seek the kingdom of God? By doing His will. And what is His will? Going to Jesus Christ and asking for Him to be your Savior, asking for that grace of God to come upon you. And His righteousness, that's what we need to be seeking. And don't stop until you have received that Spirit of the Holy Ghost. And all these things, He says, shall be added to you. All these things I'll give to you, He said. Take therefore no thought for, for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, it shall, ye shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Be careful in the things that we say and the things that we do and how we judge. But he says, by their fruits you shall know them. And look around and see, are we following the path of God? Are we walking upon that straight path? 
Or are we willing to be a part of that broad road that leads to destruction? And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how will thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, he says, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Get that big board out of your eye, he says, so that you can see. And what he's saying there is get those big things. Don't be looking around at other people and maybe trying to criticize them for something small. But he says, look right at yourself and clean up your individual condition through Jesus Christ. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Now once we have received these things, we've received that Spirit, he says, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. You don't take that, that body then that is full of that spirit and take it into conditions there that the Lord would be displeased with, into somewhere where that maybe you are not getting the instructions that the Lord would have for you to have. Maybe taking it into places where that the Lord has condemned. He says, don't take that which is holy unto dogs, he said. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine. You had a very expensive pearl necklace, something that was beautiful to look at. You wouldn't take it out to the pig pen and throw it out there. It would be destroyed. You don't want to take, again, this body that now has been cleansed and take it into a condition to where that it can be spotted by Satan, you want to keep it clean. He says, don't take those pearls and cast it before the swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. They'll just trample them down and then run right over you, he says. Destroy you. Ask, and it shall be given to you. And listen carefully to these things. Again, these are red-lettered words. These are words that Jesus Christ spoke to his people. He was preaching to them there on the mount, telling them the wonderful words of life. And it's recorded so that we can read it and that we can know the wonderful words of life. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you for everyone that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Now those were just words that the Lord spoke. I believe them. I believe it to its fullest. If we want to know it, we can have it. Or what man is there among you whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? We talked about these things earlier. I didn't know we'd read here at that time. But he is talking these things. And he's just telling us, he says, What about you? What man of you whom his son asked bread, will he give him a stone? You wouldn't do that if you had a child that was hungry and wanting something to eat and you knew that they needed it to nourish their bodies. You wouldn't go give them a, a rock and say, Here. Or if he asked a fish, would he give him a serpent? And that's the thing, the way that our Lord is. He says, you wouldn't do that. You, don't, you want to give him something that would be nourishing to his body. If he wanted a piece of meat, fish, you'd give it to him. You wouldn't go get something, a serpent, something that would be bad for him. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him again? This is just our Lord encouraging us. And he says, now we're, being e we're evil, 
and you know how to give those good things to your children, how much more will your Father, which is in heaven, give good gifts unto them that ask Him? Now, you know what the key of that is? He says, how much more will your Father? Is He your Father? Have you asked for Him to be your Father? And His Son to forgive you. And His Son to be your Savior. And if He is your Father, and you have come, He will give to you these things. And if you ask Him, He will become your Father. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Friends, the Lord makes it no excuse for that. And He's just warning the people there in that day. He says, enter you in at the straight gate. Now are you willing to enter into that straight gate? Are you willing to lay aside your will? People had to be willing in that day, the day that Jesus Christ was here and He was preaching this, they had to be willing to lay aside the law and to lay aside what they had believed before to walk on that. He said, enter you in it straight. He says, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Again, be careful in everything that you do. You can put yourself into positions if you aren't careful where that people can encourage you into things and give you understandings. He says that Satan can quote scriptures. And he can, he can give you understandings, tell you of things about that won't be correct. Won't be what the Lord is speaking of here. He says, enter you in at that straight gate. He says, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. You know why? Because we are not willing to lay aside our will. We want to do things on our own terms. And that will take us over onto that broad road that leads to destruction. But when we decide that we must do it on His terms and His terms only, and that we are willing, fully willing, and fully persuaded in our heart that we'll do that, then He can work with us and we can stay on that straight and that narrow path. Because beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Warnings again from our Lord. And he thought these things were so important to the people that he sat down on that mountain and he taught them. He spread the word and he had it recorded here so that we could hear the same thing today. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving woods. <coughs> you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather, fig, uh, gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. <laughs> Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. He just makes it plain and clear again that we either are a good tree or we're a corrupt tree. There's no in-between. There's no that part of the time on this and part there. He says a good tree will bring forth good fruit. It will not bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth 
good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And he says, said at another place, he says there, that the, the axe is laid at the root of the tree. And all of those trees that do not bring forth good fruit will be hewn down. He says the axe is there, and that's the Word of God. The Spirit of God is there for all of us. If we use that Spirit and we bring forth good fruit, then we will be as this. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, whereby their fruits you shall know them. But if we bring forth that good fruit, then we will be rewarded openly in Him. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now this is, the, this is a fearful thing to think about here. And I know that this is, things like this are going on throughout the world today. And people are able to say that, but they need, they're not saying it with the reality and with the Spirit of God within them. He says, not everyone that saith unto me, again, this is the Lord speaking these things, People can say, look around and they can say, well, why do you criticize these things? I'm just reading the things that the Lord said. And He has warned us many occasions of the false prophets throughout the world. And He is warning us today. He says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth, the will of my Father which is in heaven. Now he says he's the one, that's the one that will be that will be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. He that doeth my will, the will of my Father. And what is that? Doing the things that he asks us to do in our day, whatever it might be. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now that is about as serious as it can get to me. When I read these things and I know that what can happen or how that Satan, being a false prophet, can come into us and have us believing things that is not according to the Lord's work if we aren't careful. That Satan can enter into us as in sheep's clothing, but inward a raving wolf that will destroy us spiritually. And then and he says there, I want to read those three verses again and, and take it very serious, each one of us. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many, listen to that, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, will come to me proclaiming that you are our Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not taught in your name? And in thy name cast out devils. They thought that they were walking right with the Lord. And in thy name done many wonderful works. You can see these, these things being proclaimed throughout the world and it can be proclaimed right here among us and us be far from where we should be and not walking with Him. And then He says, and this is of that final day, and then when will I profess unto them, I will tell them, I will proclaim to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. 
And look who that righteous judge is. That righteous judge is Jesus Christ. The people above were judging their own works. And they were willing to receive the reward of their own works while they were here upon the earth. And they were not willing to put it all in. They were not willing for Jesus Christ to be number one in their life. They were not willing to seek Him first and foremost. And they heard those words, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken to him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock, the rock, the solid rock of Jesus Christ. We go over, we have read these, this part many times in the last period of time about keeping and doing the things that He says to do so that we can be established on that rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came. And the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. And I want us to all today to examine the works that the Lord is doing here at this church and let the Lord show you that if these are His words, and is it in the authority of the Spirit of the Lord that it is being presented to you and not as the world would present things to you today. But presenting the Word, simple, pure, and the truths of God, the Word of God into Him. This week, I was reading some in Galatians. And I, just thinking, came to my mind here. Some of the things that's in, that, in those chapters. And I would ask each one of you to go home this week and to read. There's only four chapters, I believe, in that short letter there. But to read those chapters... And also, and I believe it's in the third chapter of Galatians, he lists several things there. And he says, those that are involved in these things will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Just very similar to what he says here. That if you aren't doing the things and keeping my sayings and keeping me as number one, you will not be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Well, he lists these things out there. I want you to look at those. Not just read through it. Get your dictionary and look up each one of the things that he says that we need to keep clear of and get an understanding of what he says. Some of the things will surprise you quite often I do this a lot when I see a word that I really don't understand what that means in the Bible. I look up that word, and it can give you an understanding of it. And he can give, he will give us the understandings, friend. We don't have to go seek after from other people even. I know that he will give it to us. He's promised to give it to us. But if we will just do the things that he asks, go read those things. Look up the words and see how we, as an individual, 
whether or not we would be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven because we are steering clear from the things that he has said that if we are part of, we would not be able to enter into it. Let's look at these things careful. Let's take the Word of God sincerely. And let's fear Him with a reverence, a godly reverence, a godly respect, knowing that He is the one that has the power to take this life and then to cast it into prison, to cast it into hell. But He also has power to give us of that Spirit of the Holy Ghost that then when He takes that life out of this body, that then He will bring us into His kingdom that we can be a part of His people, a part of His church, the true church of Jesus Christ, that spiritual church, that's what we all have to seek for and want to be a part of today. And I hope that there may be someone here that would want to become a part of His spiritual church. And if there is someone that would like to unite with His church and make that commitment, you can let it be known by coming forward as we sing number 313.
to come out and hear a message of words of our Lord and then to sing a song that Jesus paid it all. The debt has been paid. If you do not accept that, and if we do not get our eyes singled upon Him, and we come up at that last day, and we hear those words, Depart from me, I never knew you. The blood is upon us. It will not be on Him. He's given us the opportunity. Friends, let's all, in this upcoming week, be begging the Lord to show us what He'd have for us to do. Us, you and me. That we might help His kingdom here upon the earth. And that we might have this body full of light, spiritual light. And that we might stay or we might get on that straight and that narrow road that leads to life eternal. He's tenderly calling. He's waiting. But soon, that will be over. And we will stand before Him. And we will receive our reward. Good or bad, we will receive it. Let us pray. To God the Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, thank You for what You have given to us today. I know that You're there for us. And I know that if we'll look to You, if we'll put it into Your hands, You can overcome all things for us. Help us to encourage one another and be filled with faith. Increase our faith in You. And let us see and know the power that You have to offer to all of those that ask. Be with us in the upcoming days that Your will be done in us. And show us what You would have for us to do with the things You have entrusted into our hands, spiritually and naturally, that Your work be continued here on the earth. We ask in Jesus' name, Amen. <laughs>